Okay, so you discussed in class today about establishing the metric system, uh, specifically talking about the base units and the metric scale. So, and I think you also talked about identifying appropriate units of measure within the metric system for various things. So now we're going to continue that discussion in class notes and with re review in this video of how to convert measurements along the metric scale. But before we do that, I just want to quickly review what the metric scale is. So we know in the middle we have our base units. So I'm going to actually create enough room that I can put base here. And from there, we have values to the left, which make numbers bigger, and values to the right, which is basically the equivalent of smaller units. So if you recall, on the right side, the largest unit of measurements is kilo. And that would be with a K. Okay, as in like kilometers, kiloliters, etc. The next one is DECA, D-E-K-A, and that's with an uppercase D. And then just to the right of that is HECTO, H-E-C-T-O, and that's going to be with an uppercase H. To the right of that, we have our DECI, D-E-C-I, not to be confused with DECA, D-E-K-A, and that's going to be a lowercase d that we start with. Then getting into smaller units than that is our centi, like centimeters, centiliters, etc., with lowercase c. And then finally, we have our smallest unit on the scale, the milli, right? Millimeters, milligrams, etc. So, as a quick review further, our base units that we talked about, our base units that we talked about, are as follows. For a mass, or for weight, that is grams. So any of these prefixes apply to that, kilograms or decigrams, etc. For volume, we have liters, L-I-T-E-R-S. Sometimes you'll see it L-I-T-R-E-S, the more European way. So again, we can have milliliters or hectoliters. And then finally, our base unit for length, is meters. Now, if you run any road races, you know that they have uh, races like 5K races. That's like saying that you're running a race that's five kilometers in length. And if you're wondering what the conversion of that is to miles, it's about 3.1 miles, okay? So we have our metric scale, kilo, deca, hecto, the base units of grams, liters, meters. And then when we get into the smaller size units, deci, centi, milli, okay? So we can use that scale to help us convert from one unit of measure to another. And that's really just based upon following this process. I like to start by actually writing the metric scale out. You know, just in, you, you talked maybe about some of the ways of remembering a King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. The more morbid of you, King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk, etc. So that should remind us that the metric scale is King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. There's my kilo, hecto, deca, my base unit, deci, centi, milli. Then once you have your scale set up, I like to take the given measurement establish where it falls on the scale and write it underneath the appropriate letter. And from there, I like to locate where I need to convert to. And once I have those two points established, I have a starting point on the scale, I have an ending point on the scale. And from there, I can just simply move my decimal point the number of spaces to get from start to finish. So I'm either going to be moving to the right on the scale meaning that I'm basically turning it into a bigger number of units or a bigger amount of units, or I'm going to be moving to the left, which technically means I'm getting a smaller number of units. And by moving the decimal point, we should know that we're going to create some empty space. That's where our filler zeros will come in. And then we always wanna make sure that we label our final answer with the new units. So to start with, 
if I convert, if I'm asked to convert 53 millimeters to kilometers, the first thing I'm going to do is again, write my metric scale. So King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. From there, I'm going to locate my given value. My given value is a 53 meters. I'm going to locate that, or 53 millimeters. I'm going to locate that on my scale. So I know the lowercase m is my 53 millimeters. So I'm going to put 53 there. From there, I'm going to locate my desired units. Well, I need to move or convert from millimeters all the way to kilometers or kilometers. So I'm moving all the way to there from back at the far right. I'm moving, in this case, from the far right of the scale all the way to the far left of the scale. After I've done that, so I've written out my scale, I've located my value for my given units, I've located where I need to go to, my destination, for what I'm converting to for units. Now I'm ready to move my decimal points. So this is where you want to be a little bit careful because we need to visualize the decimal point in the existing number as being right there. And from there, I'm going to have to establish how many places I need to move it. Well, in this case, I'm moving from milli, so I'm here. I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, Six. You notice when I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing from the letters. So I'm not bouncing in between the letters. So I'm going milli to centi, centi to deci, deci to my base units of meters, my base units to deca, then on to hecto, and then finally finishing up with kilo. Okay. So when I see that, I can clearly see that I'm going to move, let's count the number of bounces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells me I have to take this decimal point and move it six spaces, and I can clearly see I move to the left. So I'm going to go one, two. Now notice, that gets me to the left side of the number, but I still have more spaces to go. Three, four, five, six. And that's where we end up. This is where we now to need to fill our zeros in. You notice I have, you have to be careful here, because my first two of my six bumps were just to get from the right side of the number to the left. So I had one, two, three, four spaces left over in which to fill in zeros, and now I mark my new decimal point. So by the time I'm done, by the time I'm done, 53 millimeters is equal to 0 0.000053 kilometers. And that is our final answer. So let's do one more. A bottle of water, and this isn't unusual. Sometimes water will be measured in centiliters. We're used to seeing one liter bottles, two liter bottles, but sometimes they'll label them in liters. And so this is a fairly practical solution. You want to get a sense of, you know, how big is that bottle? So we start with our metric scale. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. And we're going to identify, first of all, where on the scale our given value is. So we have 125 centiliters. So I'm going to write 125 right there. We're going to now be asked to convert that to liters. Now, don't forget, liters, that's our base unit here, isn't it? Because So that's where we're going to, liters. So in this particular example, we're going to start at centi, and we're going to clearly move to the left. So we're going to go one, two spaces. I'm going to go from centi to deci, deci to my base units. 
that's going to move me two spaces from where my decimal point is to begin with. My decimal point is there. I'm going to go one, two. And if you notice on this one, I actually don't go beyond my number. So my decimal is going to wind up right between the one and the two. So 125 centiliters is equal to 1.25 liters. And that's just uh, an L as in a cursive L. Sometimes that's how liters are written. So that is our final answer. Now be careful, in both cases, I happen to move from the right to the left, but we could just as easily be starting on the right-hand side of our scale, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side of our scale and be moving right. And as a result, we may be having to fill zeros to the right side of our number. So that is a quick review of converting decimal, I'm sorry, converting metric numbers along metric scale. So follow these steps. You write the number, uh, you write out the metric scale, you write out the number of the given value on the scale, you locate the desired location, and now you look at which direction you're moving and how far you're moving, and you count that number of decimal spaces. And as you need to, you fill in zeros from the extra space, you relocate your decimal point, that's also an important thing, and then you label your final answer with the new unit of measure. So that wraps up today's lesson. That was a continuation from your being initially introduced to the metric system in class. This is the conversion piece of that lesson, and now you can finish doing some practice on your own.